folks, it's Lindsay Ellis with SPS back in the building over at the Mix downtown Detroit in Greektown. And it's going down. This is the SPS Edge live show. I got the greatest crew. I got my guy TJ Kelly in the building. What's up, brother? What's happening, man? Good to see you. Hey, man. Good I'm back. so glad we were able to book you and get you in here. I know how your schedule is and you're all over the place. As a matter of fact, you just came down from East Lansing. So we should have rode together, right? Because uh, we was there for the state finals the last two days, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, gas being still expensive. You know, it is not like a dollar or whatever. <laughs> like when we first started. Hey, 1993, man. I remember my senior year. It was 99 cents. Yeah, yes. Is that crazy? Yes, yes. I it came a long way. When COVID first rolled around, shoot, they said stay in your house. I was like, about to take advantage of this 80 cent gas. So you gotta get it, right? Yeah, yeah I, get it. I put, got to put some miles on the car and all that. I know. But it's great to have a full season and stuff like that. You know, where we are and, you know, just really being out of the woods. Yeah. I guess so, let's say there's more in the clear, if we could say it like that. Well, I mean, we came to appreciate uh, being able to go play without concerns. You know, now we have this. TJ, I'm just grateful for our relationship. I'm grateful for your candor and um, just acknowledging you and the work you do. I think it was a year ago, I saw you down in Indiana. Uh, and you was just working the room, man. You had all the college coaches over there. I'm talking about Big Ten, everybody, and you was just giving them, you know, TJ. And what I love about you, man, you're the same all the time. It ain't because we at this spot. Well, you know how cats be, you know, they're there, they're different. You're the same all the time, whether you're talking to Hall of Fame coach or whether you're talking to somebody grandma. Same all the time, right? right. You know, I, 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 it's a little bit easier to be consistent, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I appreciate that. You know, I got to give a shout out to that 12 mile, you know. That's that 12 mile yeah, day, right? Yeah, 12 mile, you know, my way of 6 mile, you know. Yeah, 12 mile. I love 12 mile, 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 man. Back in the day, 6 mile in Woodward, man. We used to pick at the prostitutes. Oh, wow. Signs. So I took that, took it to 12 mile. Bang. <laughs> He's wrong. History written. Well, you know, TJ, you know you're being straight up. So, TJ, when people ask what you do, how do you describe your work, your background, or you just talk about your brand? I, I guess it's kind of like a, a man of many hats. Sure. You know, I started off, I was a radio guy. Um, I worked for Detroit Public School Radio for a while. Then awesome. I wound up going to uh, working for in, in Lansing Radio. Uh -huh. um, and that was fun for a couple of years. Uh, and then, you know, radio is a, a fickle situation. Yeah. And so when they asked me if I wanted to, you know, keep on working, uh, doing easy listening, working for the same radio station uh -huh. uh, and changing up from sports, which is like a 180. Oh, that's you know, a uh, different. You know, I, I had to pass that up, you know, that's $7.50 an hour uh, going back and forth from Redford to, to Holt, Michigan. You know, it, it was one of, for four hour shifts, you know, it was, it was one of those things where it, it helped cut my teeth. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Give me a lot of appreciation, but I'm also fortunate that I was able to talk with um, over over that same amount of time, like like Terry Foster, Mick McCain, yeah. Tom Markowski, yeah. oh, man. Uh, right Leland there. Stein, uh -huh. you know, a lot of guys that really, you know, Rob Beard and stuff like that, where they, you know, Sam Wells and stuff like that, where, you know, they were able to, Andre Brackwell, you know, where they were saying, Hey, you know what? You want to you want to stay involved in stuff like that. You know, you seem to know what you're doing and stuff like yep. that. Start writing. You know, so I started writing for a few different websites, uh -huh. and, and then uh, you know, one thing winds up leading to another, and you know, really serving as a liaison, I guess, uh, to bridge that gap between um, high school coaches and players with college coaches, and being able to you know really introduce both of them together and, sure. and giving them a reason so it's not like you're giving a dry phone call sure you know sure, what i'm saying sure, sure so you know over the years Ron Rick, let's say use Juan rickman for example state champion Juan yes rickman. state Tell champion Juan Juan rickman. cast text finals yes right all that's right, right. That's yes, right. yes so shout out to cast too shout out to cast tech but you know i'm just using Juan as an example yeah yeah no great 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 they, you know, there might be some coaches that he knows, but I also know some coaches, and I'm saying, I'll tell them, hey, you need to go and recruit a Greg Elliott. You need to go recruit a Dave DeJulius, a Lloyd Neely. Uh, you know, and even like Cam, even with, let's say, talk about the guys they got now, Chris Williams, Cam Reed, uh -huh. uh, you know, go back last year, Jason Drake, uh, Trayvon Lewis, you know, yep. some of those guys, yep. you know. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. And, you know, I think I was, I, my parents did a great job of instilling a lot of uh, things in me and one of them was, you know, you have an opportunity to go and help somebody. You go and help them. I like you know, you know what I mean? Because why, why hold? I mean, college is expensive. Yeah, you know, it's a couple of dollars. To yeah, go cat, the cats want to go to. They want. They want to keep on living their dreams, playing in college. You know, if, even if you have to pay for it. You know, and talk about like Division three schools or something right. like that. You know, sometimes you get 
uh, package deals, you know, you might not get, might not get that full ride scholarship, sure, sure. you know, but you still get kids to still get to live their dreams. If I could save parents and their kids a lot of money on college tuition, you know, that's that's the beauty of it. And at the end of the day, when I get to see a lot of those guys coming back, I just saw Alex Juana uh, earlier today, who uh, was a standout at Grand Ledge. Um, you know, and this is uh, 15 years ago or whatever, but played at Michigan State, you know, but be able to see some of these guys that I've seen, you know, when they were kids, and now you see them as an adults. And, they, and to see that they're doing well, it, it kind of makes everything go full circle. I like it. And I appreciate that $7.50 an hour. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I want to go back to something you said, at party. You said a lot of great things, but there's one thing to tell us what you do and how you do it, but talk about how you're good at it. Because you can want to do these things, you can want people to put people together, and, and, and this is not patronizing. I mean, you're good at what you do. How, how do you get good at something like that when it's such a nuanced thing? They say uh, it's like telling somebody how a clock works. But how do you get good at that? You ask a lot of questions. Ask a lot of questions and shut your mouth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, I was fortunate when I came around, social media wasn't around. Right. You right. Know? And now you. Uh, I don't know, let's say you got social media. You, you, got, you got your other sports writers and stuff like that. Right. It's kind of like a, a new generation that's coming along. That's right. But you know, it, it was one of those things where I was fortunate that I got to again cut my teeth on not having social media. Uh, when you actually had to go to games, video was very limited, and so not, in, in saying that, I got to well, also, I got to meet a lot of coaches. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just reading uh, Swagger. Um, shout out to World Wide West. It was a gift from West when I was able to hang out with him. He said they were in the gym and they would have a kid's name but not know who he was. They didn't have Google or anything. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's one thing to know a name, yeah. but there's no way of even knowing who it was. So you talk about being there was so important. And I and and this is the this is one of the things like we back before social media, you know, before YouTube and all that stuff, we used to play games. Let's say you got a kid named Steve Jones. Oh, you saw him Steve play left handed or right handed. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, there'd be a whole bunch of things, you know? All right, well, what's his ethnicity? You know? Wow. Steve Jones, that's a regular name. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And wow. so you actually had to go see guys, you know, rather than saying, oh, yeah, I saw a highlight video. Because, to be honest, I mean, if you're, if you're evaluating off of a highlight video, I don't see, I don't see missed jumpers. You know what I'm saying? I don't see turnovers. I don't see, I want to watch full games. I want to be there. You don't see body attention. language on the bench. You don't see body language. You know, you know I want to see how you have for his team. Yeah, I want to see you go help your teammate. I want to see if you're the best player on the court. I want to see you be one of the first people, if not the first, to help your teammate off, this, so, off the court. Let's stay with that because we know a whole industry has grown with mm -hmm. the, um, the mixtape and doing all those things. I'm not going to anybody out there doing yeah. it. But uh, if... Why we put so much effort into that presentation when there's so many other things to focus on? What should these kids be more focused on as opposed to getting a great highlight tape? Um, I, I would I would say grades, being on time, you know, practice. You show up for practice. That college coach is going to be there, and the, when they're here in the fall or they're here during the season, they're going to show up. If it says practice is at six o'clock in the morning, that coach a lot of times is going to be there at five fifty. So if you're strolling in at 5.55 but no, no, or 6 o'clock. That's only because my mom yeah. was late dropping me off. I needed a ride. And then, you know, they, I left my shoes over my teammate house. And they, when they washed the clothes, they went all dry. But it's 6.15. I'm here. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. It, uh, man. I, I hate to go back so much in the 20th century and stuff like that. <laughs> that's okay. But there were some things that we did as kids where if you wanted it, you got it. You went and got it. You know, I remember having a job. I was caddying. Birmingham Country Club, my mom is not driving me at six o'clock in the morning, two miles when I got a bicycle. You know what I'm saying? And I understand the proximity, you know, there are some challenges and stuff like you that. But, but you really need to make those arrangements where, all right, hey, you know what, if I, if I know that, you know, some if my ride is struggling to get me there on time, I need to find new ways. Yeah. You know, a lot of times yeah. you say, hey coach, you know, hey, what do I gotta do here? Uh, hey, well, Jimmy lives right around the corner. Right. You know, he can pick you up on the way there. Or, or however it winds up working out and yeah. stuff like that. And that's a big thing is going out there and also you talk about, uh, you know, me learning and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. A lot of questions I ask, I'm not doing it on social media. You know, I'm right. calling somebody up. I'm, when I see them in person, you know, hey, why did this happen? Or you know, what's going on here? You know, you get the information. Yeah. Why do you like this player more than this player? But, you know, that was years ago when I was really learning because you think you know basketball 
until you really sit down with people yeah. who know no basketball. Yeah. And they're the ones that are making the decisions. And that's can, a, from a 20th century standpoint, probably, too. Yeah, well, I mean, even even now, I mean, yeah, videos are nice and they'll get your, they'll get your, they'll get you noticed. Yeah. You know? Noticed. But, but don't present a video and a college coach comes and sees you play and say, hey, everything's not aligning right here. You know what I'm saying? TJ Kelly says a video gets you noticed, but it won't get you signed. All day. Very rarely have I ever seen guys that, that I mean, obviously, if you're seven foot tall and you're knocking down jumpers, if you're that, that rare, you know, I mean, shoot, I mean, how many seven footers are there in the world? That's right. You know? so, like uh, the young fella uh, uh, from France, you know? Uh-huh. Everybody in Michigan, everybody in the United States is watching him sure. talking about where he's going to get drafted sure. in the NBA. Sure. That's a little bit different because you're talking yeah, about that's seven that foot three, seven like foot four. But for an average player, you want to show a lot more substance. That's right. what. What are you going to do to win them over? Are you winning games? Right. You know, R.J. Taylor didn't put up any kind of crazy stats, but he's still going to Northern Iowa just because of his ability right. to play, right. his yeah, basketball right. IQ. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to put up great stats. Yeah. You know, to be noticed by college coaches. Micah Parrish just made a Final Four at San Diego State. I mean, maybe average double figures. What was his high school time in Detroit? It was River Rouge. That's right, River Rouge. Yeah. Shout out but, to the family. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and, but he wound up playing on that big stage, you know, at, at the Breslin. Right. You know, with Rouge, coach under right. Lamonte Stone. Lamonte Stone, no, probably more people. I mean, he does know more than people than I do. Right. He's been around longer than I am. He has a strong resume. And even, you know, you know, even uh, Lamonte going and talking to coaches, hey, you need to take this guy. You need to right. take this guy. Right. Sometimes it's hard to get. Uh, college coaches to bite and see what you see, right? You know, it. and so as frustrating as it might be for college co- or for parents and for players, yeah, there's some frustration. You know, that goes along with uh, you know scouts and high school coaches. You know, or anybody who's just trying to really spread the word and help out a player. You're giving us so many nuggets. With the time we have, I do want to talk about season ended, season started. We just saw the finals. We were there, right there on the floor. It was great to be in that space with you, man. Uh, we had a good time watching these great people, but now we got this new season started. It's like mm-hmm. all fresh. What's the attitude this class of 2024 and beyond 2025 and 2026 should be having going, including AAU, which is pretty much starting right now, and getting into this new season? And I guess I throw this at you. Give me a couple top Mr. Basketball prospects, too. Oh, no, without so, so bring us home with that. Yeah, so um, in looking at the 2024 class, I think in – by when the October, November rolls around, I think that we're right on that cusp of having 20 Division One players. I wouldn't be surprised if there are 25 Division One players that come out of that 2024 class, which is the most amount that we've had, you know, maybe since the 2007 season. So you're talking about 15, 16, 17 years, right. and we used to be widely re- regarded as the mecca. Now, not to jump ahead, will there be more in the 2025 class? I, I, I really love. I mean, you gotta love. You know, there plenty of props goes out to 2025. 2025. Yeah. I, I, lo- I love talking to the coaches and stuff like that because I mess with them. And you know, Darius Acuff, you know, just won a state yep, championship. Yep, a sophomore. Congratulations uh, uh, to Mr. Uh, Acuff. Yeah, Mr. Abel. Right. Rocking the bumps. <laughs> right, right. So, but to see, to, and he's not a big social media guy no, or something not. like that. And you actually have to go ask his coach. You have to go ask his dad. You have to go ask but him. But he's won games. Yes. City championship, yep. state championship. But you have to go ask them to see what offers he has. You know? Because I'm texting back with coaches and stuff like that. I was well, like, you offer well, this guy? You offer well, him? I know like, yeah, you offered him, you know, and all this. It's just not public knowledge. Well, Coach, this all got back from... Um, <laughs> That instant classic in New York. He was at Trey McKinney's game. And he was at Darius Haycuff's game. So for, you, for good reason. You yeah. Know? You that's, talk about the level of attention he's getting, yeah, and and, that, and that's the future. Um, I think it's very important that you know the Michigan teams, Michigan universities, are able to keep in-state talent in Michigan. Yeah. I think there are many of reasons why you know there's a factor that goes into that. You're you're going to bring in more fans. Yeah. All right. Because they have, What's the business they, because they, yeah, because they know the players. Obviously, the players are talented as well. But if you're look, if you're for, if you're an in-state student, and let's say a Mac school offers you, yeah, you might want higher Eastern, Western, Central. They might have offered you Oakland, offer you University of Detroit, offer you. You might want bigger, but at the same time, are you going to trade in traveling a thousand miles when your parents have been watching you play since you were a little kid? You know, there are little yeah. things that you miss, and I'm not saying that you live in your parents' backyard. True. I think one of the beautiful things about going to college is that you get a little freedom. Right. You know? I mean, I was an hour, hour 15 minutes away when I went as an 18-year-old. Sure. You know, but I was still close enough where 
parents could drive up see me I could go back home and I think that that's important because that's your support system and those are the people that have really spent their time their effort to really watch you and obviously they want the most for you right but to be able to let's say this is a boost of confidence when you go and play sports you played sports I played sports but it's a wonderful thing to know that when you can look in the stands and you can see uh, family, friends uh, right. that, that you've known and right. say, all right, you know what, I got I to do, do it for my old man. I got to do it for my daughter. You know? How do they make the most use of me and you with this time? I would say concentrate on the little things. You have one basketball, you have five players. on. They can only play at one time. Most teams, you know, they're going to have in between eight or nine players. You know, they'll have some teams that will have ten. But I would say make sure you're going out there and doing the little things, as in helping your teammate off the floor, diving on the ball, diving on the ground for loose balls, playing defense. You know, there are guys out right now. There are guys out right now that are locked down defenders. Uh, I'm let's say um, Sean Jones was from Columbus. He's a, now at uh, Marquette, but he's a lockdown defender. Sure. He's five foot nine, but he's strong. He built like a running back. But it's more his defense than anything else that really wow. put on like EJ Ryan's from Grand Rapids Northview, right. a very strong defender. Fat Fat Brooks, another yeah. really strong yeah. defender. I like that and that's what the family. Not that they might not be the most talented offensively as uh-huh. far as being able to shoot the ball, but they're both all three of those guys are extremely smart players. Uh-huh. And they all go out there, they play hard, they defend, and they are good teammates, and that has a way of shining on to our college coaches because now I gotta bring in this 18-year-old kid to play with 19, 20, 21, 22 year old right. kids. And, it, and and the other thing is maturity. Yeah, you know? that plays well. Yeah, I just gotta remember, I mean, I don't care what state you're in, what city you're from. If you're from Detroit, if you're from Cleveland, if you're from Cincinnati, you're from Chicago, uh-huh. you're representing that city. So when you go out of town, hey, don't act as ASSS. Cause right. that has a way of following you back. And you gotta remember that a lot of these coaches are seeing that and they're gonna say, Hey, is every kid from here like right. that? You know, right. I'm starting to see tendencies where more, and then all of a sudden, recruiting starts drying up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just because he, a couple of players left a bad taste in somebody's yeah. mouth as a coach. But, I get it. You know, but yeah, yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about hard work, going out there and, and, and playing hard, playing the right way, listening to your coaches, being coachable, and winning. I get it. You're a jewel to this basketball community throughout the city, Detroit, the state of Michigan, the Midwest, and as I said, the country. I encourage people, if they see you out, to come check you out. Follow you on social media. We got that information up on the screen right now. Lastly, man, uh, last words before we get you out of here, man. Hey, um, a great high school season, 2022-23. Um, definitely looking for the grassroots season the next couple of months and then right after that we've got June team camps that are coming up I love team camps really get to see a lot of players uh, and you don't and, you, and the ages go out you know what I'm saying you get to see freshmen sophomores go against juniors and seniors right you know and it's kind of like a testing battle right you know with you know because really the rivalries are, are within high schools more than they are with AAU teams or grassroots teams because shoot I could play for three or four grassroots teams Where's the rivalry in that? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, uh, but yeah, and then on to July, and you know, before we know it, we'll be back at it again in the high school season the rolls around, and yeah, we'll be back at the Breslin. We, season starts a week earlier, right after Thanksgiving right. Uh, next season. But yeah, all in all, you know, hats off to the champions, hats off to, to all the kids that really went out there and compete. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, for the class of 2024, put in the work now, don't have regrets later on. And you'll you'll be satisfied, and you know hopefully that brings a lot of victories as well. Hey guys, you see this guy out? Say what's up to TJ. Tell him thank you for what he's doing. Pick his brain, like he said. Ask questions. With that being said, this is Lindsey House of SBS, and we're out.